Pride and Prejudice written by Jane Austen Introduction Jane Austen was the youngest child of a family of 7 brought up in a Hampshire parsonage they were a happy and intelligent family well educated open hearted and affectionately interested in each other's affairs all five boys married had active careers and produced 34 children between them The two daughters, Cassandra and Jane, never married. But they were very affectionate sisters and aunts and fully occupied with the interests of their family. The relationship between Elizabeth and Jane Bennet in Pride and Prejudice is probably a mirror of their own devoted sisterly love. Jane began writing at the age of 14 for the amusement of her family. The first drafts of Pride and Prejudice Sense and sensibility and Northanger Abbey were written before she was 24. She wrote six novels in all, as well as a few fragments published after her death at the age of 42. It is not a great number, but they are six of the most precious books in English literature. From one point of view, they are straightforward love stories with happy endings, good plots, and strong respect for domestic virtues but in their subtle psychology wit and integrity they are works of genius jane austen's whole life was passed during bitter war between england and france it may seem strange therefore that there is not a war like or violent scene in her writings her soldiers and sailors go off stage when they go to war She also lived in an age of insufferable brutality to the poor, to criminals, and to the insane. And yet there is no sense of brutality in her pages. She was no social re- reformer, but this does not make her any less an artist. She preferred a small domestic scene. Two or three families in a small area where she sat, what she liked to work on. Their friendships, misunderstandings, marriages and mishaps were the material for her craftsmanship and incomparable sense of humor. Jane Austen does not tell us about her characters. She plunges straight into the story on the first page and lets her characters in everything they do and say. Tell us about themselves. Having selected her small cast of characters, she turns them in this way and that. from the point of view of their admirers their family their enemies every word every scene adds to the portrait in the end every character in a complete unforgettable person there is suspense too in pride and prejudice one certainly falls another will bingley be loyal to jane can dorsey ever overcome his fright how can the tangle between lydia and we can be sorted out. Even when the story is well known, one reads it again and again with excitement, because every rereading shows the intricate way in which each tiny or remark foreshadows coming events. This book has been specially adapted for those for whom English is a second or foreign language, and who have reached at, at least a lower intermediate level. It will be suitable in fact for anyone who finds the original book too long or too difficult. Particularly difficult sentence structures have been avoided, though every effort has been made to retain something of the style of the original. John Mackintosh Chapter 1 If you know that a single man with a large fortune is a wife As soon as such a man enters a neighborhood, therefore he is at once considered as the future husband of one of his neighbor's daughters. My dear Mr. Bennett, said his wife to him one day, have you heard that Netherfield Park is late at last? Mr. Bennett replied that he had not. But it is, she said. Mrs. Long has just told me all about it. Mr. Bennett made no answer. Do you not want to know who is going to live there? asked his wife impatiently. You want to tell me I have no objection to hearing it. Well, my dear, 
Mrs. Long says that Netherfield has been led to a young man with large fortune from the north of England. He came down on Monday in a carriage with four horses to see the place. He was so delighted with it, he agreed immediately. He is to come here himself in September, and some of his servants will move next week. What is his name? Bingley. Is he married or single? Oh, single, my dear, of course. A single man with a large fortune, four or five thousand pounds a year. What a good thing for our girls. Why? How can it affect them? My dear Mr. Bennet, replied his wife, how can you be so tiresome? You know that I am thinking that he will marry one of them. Is that his intention in coming here? Nonsense! But it is very likely that he may fall in love with one of them, and therefore you must visit him as soon as he comes. I see no reason for that. You and the girls may go, or you may send them by themselves. Perhaps that will be better, because you are as pretty as one of them, and Mr. Bingley might like you best. My dear, you flatter me. I certainly have had a share of beauty, but I do not pretend to be extraordinary now. When a woman has five grown-up daughters, she ought to give up thinking of her own beauty. Anyway, I did not promise to go and see Mr. Bingley. But think of your daughters. Think what an excellent marriage it would be for one of them. Sir William and Lady Lucas are going for that reason. Although they do not usually visit newcomers, of course you must go. It will be impossible for me to take the girls unless you do. I'm sure Mr. Bingley will be very glad to see you, and I will send a letter with you promising consent to his marriage with any of the girls whom he likes. I must add a special word of praise for my little Elizabeth, however. What nonsense! Lizzie is not a bit better than the others. She is not half as pretty as Jane, nor as good-tempered as Lydia, but you always prefer her. They are all silly and ignorant like other girls, said he, but Elizabeth is more intelligent than her sisters. Mr. Bennet, why do you speak of your own children like that? You enjoy worrying me. You have no pity on my poor nerves. You are wrong, my dear. I have great respect for your nerve. They are my old friends. I have heard about them for at least twenty years. But I hope that, in spite of them, you will live to see me many young men with four thousand pounds a year coming to the neighborhood. It will be no use to us if twenty of them come, since you will not visit them. When there are twenty, my dear, I promise to visit them all. Mr. Bennet was a strange mixture of intelligence, sarcasm, humor, and unsociable reserve. After twenty-three years, his wife still did not understand his character. Her mind was less difficult to understand. She was a woman of little intelligence and less knowledge. She had a bad temper, and she was discontented. She blamed her nerves. Her business in life was to get her daughters married. Her pleasure was visiting and gossiping with her friends. Stay tuned, like, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.